Today you're going to be creating a Spanish tile print. You're gonna need a piece of foam, some markers, a pair of scissors, a pencil and eraser, and a ruler. You're gonna start out by measuring our piece of paper into a nine inch square. So I'm marking nine inches in two places. I use my ruler to connect the two dots to make a straight line. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side mark two spots of nine inches and connect the two dots. Now I'm going to cut out the square. I'm going to do my very best to make sure that I'm cutting right on the line. I want this to be as perfect of a square as possible. Now I'm going to do the same thing to a piece of paper, except I'm going to turn this into a four and a half inch square. Four and a half because that is half of nine. That's going to come into play in just a minute. So I need my length to be four and a half inches and I need my width to be four and a half inches. I'm going to carefully cut out this square. Now I'm gonna take my sheet of foam. I'm gonna lay the square on top and I want this piece of foam to be the same exact size and shape as my square piece of paper. So I'm gonna take a ballpoint pen and I'm essentially going to trace the square but I'm also gonna use a ruler to make sure that my lines are very straight. Now the reason I'm using a pen is because it shows up best on this um, piece of foam. You're going to need a ballpoint pen in order to carve out our design today. So I'm carefully cutting out the square of foam and now I've got all three items that I need. So I'm gonna take my piece of paper and I'm gonna fold it in half diagonally to make a triangle. I am going to draw a design. I'm only drawing the design on one half of the square. I'm going to be keeping in mind that this same design is going to be reflected on the other side to create a symmetrical design. I want to try to make my design look as much like a Spanish tile as possible. So you will be getting inspiration from some patterns that I'm going to share with you. You want to make sure that your lines are not too close together. If they are too close together, that will be a problem later on with this project. You didn't like what I did, so I erased it and fixed it. You can always fix your mistakes. Now I'm taking a Sharpie and I'm tracing over these lines. The reason I'm using a Sharpie is because I wanna be able to see through to the other side of the paper. If you don't have a Sharpie, you could always just use a regular marker. You might just have to um, layer it. So draw one line on top of another line in order to make sure you can see through to the other side. All right, now I'm gonna transfer this image on the other side of the paper. So I'm gonna take a pencil Oh, after I finish my design. I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to color on top of the black lines. What I'm doing is I'm laying down a layer of graphite. This graphite is going to be transferred to the other half of the square. I'm going back and forth over the black lines to make sure that there's enough graphite to be able to transfer the image. I need to make sure that I color on top of every black line. Make sure you do not miss a line. Then I'm going to fold this in half in the reverse way so that I can see the 
um, Sharpie through the other side. Now I'm tracing over those lines with my pencil and I'm pushing really hard. I'm coloring a little bit just to make sure that I really get that graphite from the reverse side transferred. So right now, as I'm coloring with this pencil, I am pushing the graphite through to the other side of the paper. So as soon as I open this up, you're gonna see that same image transferred on the other half of the square. Now I'm gonna take my Sharpie and I'm gonna trace over those pencil lines that I can see. I really wanna look back at the other half of the paper just to make sure that <clears throat> my design matches up. I wanna make sure that this design is as symmetrical as possible. So where I folded the paper in half, that is the line of symmetry. Now I'm gonna lay my piece of paper on top of the foam square. Now we're gonna attach this piece of paper to the foam square using tape. My suggestion would be to use masking tape and to take little pieces um, and put them on all four sides. If you don't have masking tape, you can use a different type of tape, but just be careful because if you make a mistake, you don't wanna end up ripping the paper before you're ready to take it off. Now. I had masking tape somewhere in my house, but I misplaced it. So I'm gonna be using a different kind of tape. Um, the only kind of tape that I could find was duct tape. So I'm gonna rip off a few little pieces and I'm gonna carefully place them around the edge of the square. I just wanna make sure that I don't lay any tape over the black lines. They cannot touch the black lines. So I wanna make sure I only put tape in places where it's just paper and no black lines. I also wanna make sure that the piece of paper is fitting exactly where it should on the square. I don't want part of the paper hanging off the edge at all. You wanna make sure that the square paper is completely covering the square foam. Now I'm taking a ballpoint pen and I am pushing through that paper and I'm making a few strokes and I'm ripping the paper as I'm getting the pen mark on the foam below. When the piece of paper comes off, I go back and check, I pull up the piece of paper, and I make sure that I can see the line that I just drew. If I can't see the line that I just drew, I take my pen and I go back over the line. Now you're gonna make sure that you start on one corner and you're gonna work your way up, but you're gonna work on both sides simultaneously. So as you can see, I'm carving away the pieces of paper that are closest to the edge facing me. So I don't want to go ahead and do a shape like that flower piece because I don't want any extra paper coming off that doesn't need to come off. So I'm kind of working from one way, from one side of the paper to the other side. So from one corner up to the other corner. Now what I'm doing is I am just getting the pen to make a mark where the design should be. And the reason I'm using a pen and not a pencil is because the ink of a ballpoint pen shows up really well on this type of foam. Now this process is gonna take you a little while. So make sure you set aside some time to really make sure that you can tackle this with precision and make sure that you're using excellent craftsmanship. So you wanna make sure that 
every place that that line should be, that's where it goes. You don't wanna make silly mistakes because you're rushing that makes your design asymmetrical. We wanna keep that symmetry. Ultimately, we are gonna be creating a radial design. So this symmetrical design that we're starting with is going to be printed four times to create another design that is radially symmetrical. As you can see, I am going back over the lines that didn't show up very well. And I'm doing this after each step. I don't wanna completely finish the entire square and then realize that I needed to go back and fix some lines, but maybe make a mistake because I don't know where the design was supposed to go. So you wanna make sure that you do this um, after each little piece of paper falls off as you are carving through that paper. As those little pieces of paper fall off, they can go in the trash. You don't need them anymore. Again, you really wanna take your time with this. If you're careful, and if you're precise, these designs turn out incredibly beautiful. So I'm going to get those little cutouts done first because if I were to pull off that entire piece when I make the straight lines, then I wouldn't know where those little pieces were supposed to go. So I need to carve out those small little leaf shape pieces of paper before I do that last big line. So use logic as you are completing this. Do what makes sense. If you think that carving through the paper is gonna pull off too much and you won't know what to do next, then think about how you can carve one step at a time to make sure that you're not pulling off any paper that needs to stay on the foam. Now for these straight lines, in order to make sure I carve this very precisely, I'm using a ruler. It makes it really easy to get that line carved out really quickly and very precisely. All right, now when I'm done, all this paper, all the tape is just scraps and they can go in the trash. As you can see, I've got a couple little lines that need some touching up. So I'm gonna go over those quickly. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is use my pen to push very, very hard on top of every line. So I'm gonna move my pen back and forth and back and forth until I make a nice big divot down in the foam. You will be able to see a line on the opposite side of the foam if you're doing it correctly. If you can't see a line on the other side of the foam, then you're gonna need to go back and push harder. Okay, so see that line right there? Now I'm going to trace over every pen line, pushing very, very hard. This is gonna take a little bit of time but it's very important that you carve this line deep enough. So if you are creating a print with the same type of technique, but we were using printmaking tools such as a gouge and linoleum, you would be taking this tool and actually carving out linoleum. This is a little bit easier because we're actually just drawing to carve. 
So we can be more precise with our hand as we are creating these lines. It's much easier to draw a line than to carve a line with a gouge. Now, as you can see, I'm moving my pen back and forth and back and forth over and over again to make sure that I'm carving that line deep enough. So I'm pushing nice and hard, but I'm also not pushing too hard so that I make a hole in the foam. If you go back and forth with your pen too many times or you push too hard, you'll actually poke holes in the foam and part of your foam could fall apart, which we really don't want to happen. We want to make sure that it stays in its square. So really try not to poke any holes or to accidentally chop any pieces off of your square. Now when I finish this, I'm gonna show you the back side. And you're gonna see all the lines that I was talking about. You won't see actual pen lines. You're just gonna see a whitish looking line um, every place that I carved. And that's because I'm pushing through almost all the way to the other side. And that little bit of foam is kind of poking out on the back side. So as soon as I finish going over every last line, you will see what the back should look like. Okay, see all those lines? Now if I notice a spot that I need to go back over, I'm gonna do that because I wanna make sure that this is precise. So in order to get the best effect from this project and the best results, this line needs to be carved as much as it can be carved without you actually poking holes. And in order to do that, you, you need to make sure that you see that whitish line on the back side of the foam. Now when I finish going back over these lines, it's gonna be ready for the next step. For the next step, you are gonna need some washable markers. I suggest using between three and four colors. You don't wanna use too many colors because if you go crazy with colors, then you're going to end up forgetting which colors you used where you used them. So what I'm doing is I'm dividing my square paper into fourths. So I measured four and a half inches on the top and four and a half inches at the bottom. And then I'm gonna connect those two dots with a very, very faint line. See how you can barely see that line that I drew? You really don't wanna see that line very much because um, you won't be able to erase it from the end product. Now I'm just making sure that my square is going to fit in there perfectly and I'm also going to make an arrow where the center is going to be. So that arrow is going to point to the center every time I make a print on that paper. So I'm picking my colors. Remember you don't want to use more than three or four colors because it will get very confusing. You also don't want to use one color in one shape right next to another shape of that same color. So all of my shapes are going to be um, different colors if they are touching each other. So in other words, when I color next to that pink flower, I will not use pink. I will use a different color. So none of my pink space spaces should touch each other. You wanna make sure that you are staying inside the lines. If you accidentally go outside the lines, just rub it off like I just did. If you go outside the lines, it will end up um, causing you to make a mistake when we print this.
Now the reason we're using washable markers is because we want this marker to be able to come off of the foam and go onto the paper. If we were using permanent markers, that wouldn't happen. So with a little bit of water on the paper, we can take this foam with marker on it, press it on the paper, and this marker is going to transfer onto the paper to create a really lovely design. And every place that we carved those lines, that's gonna leave a white spot on the paper. So every line that you see that we carved will create a white line on the paper. This part takes the longest. You might not wanna do this all in one sitting because it is so time consuming. The entire project took me about an hour and 15 minutes from start to finish. And I know how to do this. If you are doing this for the first time, it's gonna take you longer than that. So I suggest you go at it in several sittings and not try it in one sitting. However, if you have a big chunk of time, please feel free to work on this until you get it done. You're gonna have to repeat this coloring three more times. It takes a long time to make sure that you are coloring accurately, staying inside or outside of those lines, and also to make sure that you are getting enough color on the foam. In order to make the print look nice and colorful and make the colors look rich and deep, you wanna make sure that there is no part of the foam that's ex that isn't colored. And if your marker is starting to die on you, then pick a different marker because a dying marker will not yield great results. So see, I'm being really careful to make sure I'm not getting any of that purple marker in a place that it doesn't belong. So you really do have to take your time with this step. Now, for the next step, we are going to be using water and a paintbrush. However, if you don't have a paintbrush in your house, that's fine. You could use a damp sponge instead. What you would do is you would dip your sponge in some water, make sure it's wet but not too wet, and you would just dab it all over one square of your paper. So I'm using a paintbrush, as I said. I wanna make sure the paintbrush isn't too wet, and I'm only going to paint this water in one square. Now I'm making sure that the water is nice and flat and there aren't any little puddles on the paper, which is why I'm kind of going back over this a few times. So the arrow should be pointing toward the center. You wanna make sure that everything is lined up really nice and neatly because once that foam touches your paper, you cannot pick it back up. I'm taking my fingers and I am pressing each and every spot of the back of the foam. You need to make sure that you do this because every part of that foam needs to touch the paper in order to transfer the marker. So I'm going over it and over it and over it just to make sure that those colors stick and voila. Now I'm going to press the piece of foam onto my messy mat. I might take um, a piece of paper and kind of press it on there because you wanna make sure that your foam is not wet when you go to color it again. That's a great way to ruin your markers. So you wanna make sure it's nice and dry and remember where you put the colors. So you have to make sure that those colors go back in the same spot because we are creating a radially symmetrical design. So radial symmetry basically means that you have symmetry around a circle or around a center rotating point. So the way that I like to think of it would be like a pie. 
pies are cut into slices, usually about eight slices. Each pie slice would look exactly the same if that pie shows radial symmetry. So in our case, we have four pie slices. Since our square paper is cut into four pieces, we have four pie slices. So each of those smaller squares is kind of like a pie slice. And I'm making sure that each pie slice looks exactly the same. So the tip of the pie slice should go in the center of the pie, which is why I have an arrow on the back of the piece of foam, which is pointing to the tip. So that point that should go toward the center of our design or the center of the square. So every time I make a new print, I'm gonna make sure that that black arrow is pointing toward the center of the square. If you forget to place an arrow on the square, it's gonna be very easy to make a mistake. And once you make a mistake, there's no fixing that mistake. To get a radially symmetrical design, you would have to start over. You'd have to start from scratch. And I would not want you to do that because, like I said, this is a little bit time consuming. Now, as you color for the second, third, and fourth time, it's really important to make sure that your marker ink goes on the foam just as good as it did the first time. You wanna make sure that same amount of color is laid down. Because for instance, if you used a new green marker the first time, but then you had the same color green, but with a dyeing marker, when you make your second print, the color will not look the same as the first print. We want the colors to look the same each time we do this. So it's important to make sure that the marker ink looks the same on the foam each time. So I'm gonna wet another square. Now when I get ready to lay my piece of foam down, I have to make sure that the arrow points toward the center. I'm gonna make sure that the lines line up with the edges of the white square. And I wanna make sure that those little pink shapes on the one side match up with those same little shapes right next to it. So those little pink spots are going to essentially touch each other. Now here's another way to make sure that every part of your foam is touching the paper. You can take a marker and kind of roll it over because it's applying even pressure. But I would still suggest using your fingers to press around to make sure you get that color nice and rich everywhere. So again, I have to get all of the water, all of the moisture off of the foam before I begin coloring. So again, you're repeating the same thing. You have two more times that you have to do this, and then you'll have your finished product. If you put too much water on your paper before you lay your piece of foam face down, the marker colors will bleed into one another and you will lose the white line. You wanna make sure that you can keep that white line because that's a crucial part of the design. So if there's too much water on the paper, your colors will blend together, and you'll lose the design. If you don't have enough water before you lay your foam down and press, then not enough of the marker will touch the paper and transfer. If you don't have much of the marker transfer to the paper, then you're going to have 
a design that looks very faded. Your colors will not be rich and deep. And it'll essentially look a little bit sloppy. You want to make sure that you're showing excellent craftsmanship. And part of that is making sure that your colors fill in all of the white space, aside from the white lines created by the divots. Now, when printmaking, it's important to remember that your printing plate, which is what we're coloring on top of right now, your printing plate can be used over and over and over again. So I could take this same printing plate and make a thousand of those designs and I would end up with the same design every time. And that's the beauty of printmaking is you can create a repeating design where every piece is exactly the same. One great use for printmaking would be to create the same design on maybe a card over and over and over again. So I'm wetting this third square, making sure that I don't get any water into any of the other squares, making sure that I don't leave any puddles, making sure that the arrow is pointing toward the center, making sure my lines on the edges of my foam line up with the edge of the paper and the pencil line. I'm using this marker to um, transfer the marker, but remember you still want to use your fingers because as you're about to see, I didn't get enough of that marker on the edge there. So that green spot is looking a little bit sloppy. I'm going to try to get a little bit more on there, but I wasn't too successful. So that's one reason why it's really important to make sure you're using those fingers to press every last area, even if you do use the marker as well, because you want to make sure that those colors really transfer. On to the final square. Your wrist is going to be tired. Your hand is going to be tired. So if you need to take a break in between your printing sessions, please take a break. If you need to take a day break in between, that's fine too. Come back to it when you feel ready. Now, if you did accidentally color outside the lines, what would happen is some of that color would show up in part of the design that it's not supposed to. So you wanna make sure that you fix any little errors before you print it because once that colored side of the foam touches your wet paper, like I said before, there's no going back. So if you accidentally drop it as you're trying to place it, that marker is going to have already touched the wet paper, which will make those colors bleed onto the paper. So be really, really careful each time you are laying your piece of foam down. Really take your time with it. Don't accidentally drop it. Just be careful. If you need to, look back at the design to remember where you put certain colors because if you're coloring on top of an orange piece of foam like I am or you might be coloring on top of a green piece of foam, the colors will not look like the actual colors. So as you can see, the green and the purple that I'm using both kind of just look brownish. So if you forget where you put certain colors, you can always look back at your design to figure that out.
Now I'm placing this last piece is going to be very, very important because you're gonna connect two of the sides to the rest of the design. So you wanna make sure that the two edges that have those little pink half leafs, you really wanna make sure that they line up perfectly with the other designs that have already been printed. So those little pink pieces should match up with the little pink pieces on the other square. I'm just going back over some colors to make sure that I do a nice job. I don't want to be sloppy with this fourth piece. I want to make sure that I wet my paper just the same as I did before, not getting any water into any of the other squares, making sure I don't have any puddles, making sure it's just a nice even layer of wetness. And remember, you can use a sponge for this if you don't have a paintbrush. Making sure that arrow is pointing toward the center. And making sure that you use all of your fingers to press around the entire piece of foam. Take your time with this. You don't want all of that coloring to have been a waste because once you print this, you cannot pick up the piece of foam and lay it back down. Once that foam comes up off the paper, you're done. And now we have a radially symmetrical design inspired by a Spanish tile print. I hope you guys enjoy making yours just as much as I enjoyed making mine. Have fun and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.